Malcolm III, or Malcolm Canmore as he's more commonly remembered, is a Scottish king whose legacy is overshadowed by the achievements of his glamorous wife. He's kind of like Scottish, version, Scottish history's version of Prince Charles, you know, except that Malcolm actually got to be king and uh, and he achieved a lot malcolm you know like he he avenged the death of his father he won back the kingdom that his father had lost uh, he brought back disparate parts of the country such as kind of norse earldoms of caithness and sutherland back under his control um and he established what was or what is one of the most important and successful royal dynasties in scottish history the canmore or dunkeld dynasty basically He's nothing like Prince Charles. I mean, Prince Charles is mainly famous for waiting on his maw to die, isn't he? Like, that's his thing, you know? I, I feel like he really missed an opportunity with the old coronavirus as well. That was his moment, you know? Because to be fair, like, we do, we need, we need a change. I, for one, think that it's about time the British monarchy had an injection of energy and rejuvenation that only... A 71-year-old man can bring to the throne. You know, it's the change that we all need. Now, Malcolm, after defeating Macbeth and Macbeth's son, Lulach, who had the unfortunate nickname of Lulach the Simpleton, on account of the fact that he would encourage his subjects to drink bleach, um, Malcolm, he married Thorfinn the Mighty, who was the Norse Earl of Orkney's widow, Ingeborg. Now, Ingeborg gave birth to a son, Duncan, who Malcolm handed over to the English as part of the Abernethy submission in 1072. Can you imagine that? Like handing over your own son to your mortal enemy. The only other person I know that would do that is Donald Trump with that wee kid that he keeps locked away. You know, the, the one child he actually doesn't want to pump. And he'd just be like, ah, oh, you, you want Baron? Oh, I, I forgot he was here, to be honest with you. Aye, fucking take him. Nobody cares about that wee prick. Aye, crack on, you know. Now, Malcolm, he was completely and utterly obsessed um, with the north of England. Uh, Malcolm had five unsuccessful raids of Northumberland and Cambria. But um, you know what they say, like, if at first you don't succeed, try and try and try and try again and then die on your final attempt. Such was Malcolm's insurrections into the north of England that William II had to, in 1091, build the new castle uh, in an attempt to stop attacks, invasions coming from Scotland. His thinking being that he would create a race of people so fucking mental that even Scottish people would be like, ah, listen, didn't even bother with them. Honestly, they're fucking mental. Just leave them to it, honest to God. Now, Malcolm's second wife, Margaret, um, she was a Hungarian princess. Margaret's brother, Edgar, <coughs> was one of the claimants to the throne, or to the, was one of the claimants after Edward the Confessor in England died. Now, Edgar gave up his claim to Harold Godwinson, who's famed for getting fucked in the eye with an arrow. And after 1066 and the Norman invasion, Edgar and Margaret, they're fleeing. And their, their ship is blown off course and they run aground in Fife. So Malcolm, he rides out from Edinburgh Castle to meet these kind of royal shipwrecks. And it's very much a case of love at 40-year-old man sees hot 20-year-old princess first sight. Because uh, Malcolm, he's head over heels in love with Margaret. Um, right on the first... This is the first time that including Fife in his Tinder radius had actually paid off for Malcolm. You know, he falls head over heels in love and just a couple of months later, the two of them are married. Now, Margaret's Can Margaret Canmore's impact on Scotland is immediate. Margaret Canmore is the woman who brought Scotland into Europe 900 years before Boris Johnson would then take us the fuck back out again and we need another really important woman, Nicola Sturgeon, to get us back fucking in there. But basically, um, Margaret, she managed to get the rest of Europe to recognise the Kingdom of Scotland. And the way in which she did this was by, by changing the religion from the Celtic Church of Iona to the Roman Church, which was recognised by the rest of Europe. So she instilled the first uh, Roman Bishop of St Andrews. She encouraged pilgrimage to St Andrews. She set up a free ferry crossing. Now the point at which she crossed the fourth is still called Queen's Ferry to this day in, uh, in honour of Queen Margaret. And such was her piety that uh, after her death, Margaret was actually canonised. She became Saint Margaret, right? And like all saints, you've got to have a miracle on your record, right? And St Margaret's miracle, I reckon, 
is the most Scottish miracle going because it is incredibly boring and uninspired, right? Because St Margaret's miracle is this. She was riding her pony over a stream, right? And as she was riding her pony over the stream, her Bible fell out into the water. And when she picked up the Bible, it was still dry. And that's it. She basically, Margaret basically got a sainthood for having a Ziploc bag. Do you know what I mean? Um, although to be fair, like Margaret, she married way, way beneath herself. She married a gruff, overly aggressive, illiterate Scotsman. By that reckoning, about 80% of Scottish women are probably eligible for sainthood in this country, you know? Now, Malcolm and his eldest son to Margaret Edward, they go out on one last fateful raid of Northumbria in 1093, and the two of them die. And Margaret, uh, she's in Edinburgh Castle on her de on her in her sickbed, on heeding the death of her husband and her son, she dies shortly afterwards. Um, and her and Malcolm, they were buried next to each other in Dunfermline Abbey. Although 500 years later, Mary Queen of Scots would have Margaret's, rem Margaret's remains dug up and she would place her head in her birthing chamber, like a kind of early version of Alexa or something. Like, I don't know if she was asking Margaret how dilated she was. It'd be amazing if Mary Queen of Scots was on, uh, was on countdown, do you know what I mean? That'd be one hell of a good luck charm, that, wouldn't it, on your table? Now, Margaret and Malcolm's deaths uh, uh, led to civil unrest in Scotland. Uh, Malcolm's brother, Donald Bain, he led a Celtic rebellion, which was put down by Malcolm's son to Ingeborg Duncan, um, who ruled briefly as Duncan II, but then there was a counter-rebellion and Donald uh, regained the throne and ruled again as Donald III until uh, Malcolm and Margaret's eldest son, Edgar, defeated Donald in 1097. And what followed was a remarkable period whereby all of Malcolm and Margaret's sons would go on to be kings of Scotland. Um, although Edgar and Alexander were vassal kings, uh, which basically means they were kings of Scotland under the control of the King of England. It's a bit like being the leader of the, the Scottish Labour Party or the Scottish Conservative Party, you know what I mean? Like you're leader, but really everyone knows that you're London's little bitch, you know? Uh, and Margaret and Malcolm's youngest son, David, he would go on to be one of the most important and one of the most significant figures in Scottish history. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about next weekend. Uh, so if you have made it this far, thank you very much for listening, folks. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I hope you're enjoying your uh, wee lockdown dram this evening. Uh, cheers. Slanja.